hi guys this is Vineet and in today's video we will talk about or uh, we will do uh, or we will continue with the ATL services project so this is an ATL project of which I have created three videos uh, already uh, part one part two and part three so let's continue with part four of integration services ATL project tutorial so let's move uh, ahead to notes but before that I would request you guys to please uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed or if you are new to this channel uh, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel there is a subscribe button below this video click on that subscribe button it will give you a bell icon click on that bell icon select all notifications to get notifications uh, regarding all my future videos now there are some points to remember while watching this video please watch this video till the end to gain better clarity of the concept and if it's possible for you please watch this video twice or thrice until it's got uh, clear to you uh, now perform any of the exercises mentioned in your video in your test and lab environments only do not touch any production environment or production databases and we would like to know your thoughts regarding our videos so please do share your comments we love to read your comments and suggestions I have created some playlists for you to watch. You can watch them out. Uh, links are given in the video description area. So some of the playlists are SQL Server Database Design, SQL Server Tables, Business Continuity, SQL Server Indexing, SQL Server Performance Tuning, and SQL Server Integration Services. Now, if we talk about this video, this video will be part of the uh, Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services playlist, uh, which has already around uh, 15 videos as of yesterday. So, a uh, link is given in the channel description for this particular playlist. You can check out the playlist, watch all the videos uh, to get a uh, better idea on the integration services. So, this video is the part 4 of the series uh, where I am building the ETL project. So, I hope you have uh, already watched uh, part uh, from part 1 to part 3. If not, please, uh, I would request you to go ahead and uh, start watching part 1 and then move on to part 2 and part 3. And this is ultimately part 4. Now, I also have a channel page link, uh, which is also uh, the link is given in the video description area as well. On my channel page as well, you can subscribe to my channel. You will find a subscribe button there as well. Apart from that, you will find all these playlists on my channel page. And uh, in addition to that, you will uh, get a playlist uh, uh, curated specially for you as well, as you uh, YouTube has that feature. So currently I have around uh, 168 videos posted on my channel. Now let's come back to today's topic which is integration services ATL project tutorial part 4. Let's move to notes area. So in my earlier video I had covered uh, adding and configuring the OLEDB connection of the destination. Uh, not connection basically we have added the OLEDB destination we have also added and configured the lookup transformation so we had to add it two lookup transformations in the previous video if you haven't watched please watch them in sequence now in today's video i will cover the step eight which is how you can annotate and format the package uh, that we have created so let's quickly go ahead and open up uh, my package so let me type visual studio over here so this is the ssis tutorial project i'm building so i'm opening that project now guys uh, up till last video we had completed the configuration of the package and now it's time basically to tidy up the package layout so basically we need to check if the shapes uh, in the control and data flow layouts are of different sizes or not uh, laid out evenly so this is basically the design part or aesthetics i would say so if the things are not aligned uh, the package may be more difficult to understand now sql server data tools uh, provide tools to easily format the package layout and uh, let me go to notes so let's continue with step eight so we will look into the package layout item we will look into the package layout stuff here uh, we will check shapes uh, 
in the control and data flow tabs uh, are of uh, appropriate size etc so if the things are uh, accurate or aligned properly uh, the package uh, will get a little easier to understand now we talk about the sql server data tools uh, it provide tools to easily format and layout the change the layout of the package so provides uh, tools for let me unbold it so sstt provide tools for uh, tools to format the package and the formatting features give me a moment guys all right guys let's continue so we were talking that talking about sstt which basically provides tool to format the package uh, properly uh, format the package layout basically i would say and the formatting features include the ability to make shapes uh, of the same size uh, alignment of shapes and uh, so making uh, shapes uh, same size and uh, their alignment we take a look into that and uh, apart from that we look after the horizontal and vertical spacing between the component vertical spacing between controls all right so we will look into that and another way to improve the understanding of package functionality is to add annotations so basically uh, annotations uh, are text that we add to the package that basically describes the package functionality so what are annotations if we would say so we talk about annotations uh, it is the way to way to uh, so what does annotations do uh, they basically describe the package functionality basically we provide notes in the package in the form of annotations now in this task particularly uh, we are talking about this uh, task the step eight what we will do we will annotate and format the package that we have created so in this task we will use the formatting features in sql server data tools to improve the layout of the data flow and we will also add an annotation to our project so be ready to do this stuff with me now first uh, part is we will cover the format the layout of the data flow so let's dive into that so i'm inside the visual studio i've opened up my project if you have not created this project already i would highly recommend going through part one of this video up till part three so that you are at this stage and to continue with this practical now package is uh, right now open so let's select the data flow tab in the package and uh, basically it shows us the four components that we had built over here so we need to select all the components over here so one way is to do edit and there's a select all options otherwise you can press ctrl a as well otherwise you can drag an arrow until all the objects are selected so let's do edit select all to select all the components now there's a format menu click on that and there's an option make same size now we want to make same size for width and height both so let's do that so now they are of same size and width <clears throat> now alignment is not accurate but yeah width, width wise if we say they are all the same now with all the let's do select all once again now with all the objects selected again on the format menu uh, there's an align option so we need to align the center of these uh, four uh, buttons you will say uh, you can say or controls you can say so align their centers so now you see all the four tasks are in the same line so this is how you can do the alignment formatting now let's select the data flow objects once again do a select all now uh, on the format menu so 
this time we are controlling the spacing between these components although it's look even but i think there's a little bit difference so let's do edit select all and on the format menu there's a vertical spacing option so it will control the spacing between each and every object and uh, we can make the spacing equal so click on that so you can see now the controls are adjusted so that space between each control is looking equal so this is how you can control the uh, formatting options and uh, now let's go ahead and add the annotations which is basically used to describe the package now we can right click anywhere in the background of the data flow design surface and uh, we have the option to add an annotation click on add annotation so let's add some text over here maybe we can add it uh, let's add it here so let's uh, add some text to it i don't know where they it is disappearing but yeah let's try again so let me type first i'm typing this as a sample text uh, basically we need to uh, write some meaningful text so at the bottom of the package i'm uh, writing some stuff to describe the package so let's make some space and let's write some text over here right so control uh, size itself according to the typing you do so let's write some text so i'm writing the data flow extract so basically not the data flow this data flow what that does is it, it extracts the data from a file i'm writing some description so it uses a flat file to extract the data and then looks up values in the currency key and uh, currency key column in the dim currency table and the data i think we need to press enter currency key table and the date key column in the dim date table this is what we had discussed yesterday so it reads the data from the flat file uh, it looks up the columns currency key and date key in the dim currency and uh, dim date table and finally and finally writes the data to the or we can say matching data to the new fat currency rate table so this is uh, what is the purpose of the object so I've added some annotation. So this is the annotation, which is basically the textual description. And uh, to wrap the text, we have discussed, you need to press enter to wrap the text to next line. And, and if you don't add the text to the annotation box, the box uh, usually disappears when you click outside it. So it's essential to add text to the annotation box. And because of this behavior, if you want to paste the text in the annotation box, uh, then copy the text to the clipboard before selecting add annotation. So text should be, if you're copying it, uh, copying the text from somewhere, so make sure you copy it first and then uh, use the add annotation option. Then you can press Control V or paste, uh, select edit paste to paste the uh, copied text. So guys, we are done with the step eight of this process so we are done with this let's go back to notes so we are done here we had added the annotation we had added uh, we had shown you how you can align the controls uh, control the vertical spacing as well and make them how to size them how to size controls we have discussed about that now let's move on to next step which is uh, step nine where we will test our package so far but whatever we have built so in this uh, step, uh, we have already done the following task. We have created a new SSIS project. 
so uh, we have created a package right so what we will do in this tutorial or uh, this step 9 is we will create a new SSIS project okay okay so we are discussing about what we have already built so let me not write it so what we have done is we have created a new ssis project we have configured some of the connections managers uh, for the package to connect to the source and the destination data this is i'm um, discussing whatever we have done so far so we have created an ssis project we have configured the connections manager for the package to connect to the source and destination data we have added some uh, data flow that takes the data from the flat file source and uh, we have added some lookup transformations on the data and basically uh, we have configured the data for the destination to be loaded in the uh, table uh, which was uh, that what was the table name new fact currency rate table so this is what we have done uh, so far so at this moment our package is complete and uh, let's save it save the package so package is now complete uh, it is ready to for testing so let me show you how you can test it so first of all we will check the package components so before you test the package so let's go to notes so before you test the package before you test the package please verify that the control and data flows package contain the objects uh, so basically there is no need to verify so let me the controls are there so there's nothing to verify so let's go ahead with the testing of package so just uh, just to check the package whatever we have so on the control flow tab we have this uh, task uh, extract sample currency data right and basically uh, control flow contains only this particular one component after that we have a data flow so in data flow we have four components extract sample currency data we do look up on the currency key we do look up on the date key and finally we are loading the data into a new table uh, using the sample oledb destination object now uh, let's go ahead with the testing of this package so how to run this package so far we have built it so you see a debug menu over here right and uh, there's a start debugging option over here so select that once you click on the start debugging the package runs and it will show show us that uh, around 1097 rows successfully added uh into the new fact currency rate tables so let's first check the new fact currency rate table i think it was empty when we last checked so let's check it again before we start running the package uh, so that package basically loads 1097 rows into that particular new table new fact currency rate in the adventure works dw2022 database and let me first quickly check the table so right now SQL Server is loaded and let's select AdventureWorks DW2022 database and run a select statement against the new fact currency rate table. So let's do a select star from new fact currency rate. So let's execute it. Uh, right now we see the table is empty. Let's run the project quickly. So on the debug menu, uh, do a start debugging it will run the package so there are no errors zero error zero warning so package is currently running all right so we, uh, if you look at the package we see over here that 1097 rows are extracted and match is made on the 1097 rows itself uh, on both the lookups and finally these 1097 rows get loaded into that new table right so we have verified the result on the data flow tab so all steps are complete you see uh, green check marks uh, 
green and white check marks so there are no errors uh, in the project and if we take a look at this table now if we execute the statement we see that all the matching data is now populated in the new fact currency rate table right now let's go back to visual studio now once this package has completed running so which is now it is complete all the steps are complete on the debug menu we can select on the stop debugging option to stop the package so this is done let's save the package quickly all right uh, let's see how much we have recorded uh, around 20 minutes of video so guys in the next video let's see if i can cover it in this video so in the next video what i will cover is i will cover a new topic let's uh, discuss a little bit about that so so steps nine are completed so what we have done is we have done we have created a basic project and basic package with ssis all right now what we will do after this in the next video what i will cover is uh, we will add we will show you how you can add how to add looping with ssis so this is what we will do and we will discuss about that and uh, so far we have uh, shown you how you can build a basic package and how you can test the package right so i think you have got idea till this point it in next lesson we will i think continue from here only and we will show you uh, how you can uh, use the package created so far to add uh, looping and other items so in this video let me prepare for the uh, let me prepare for the next uh, video so so far we have created a project and a basic package with ssis uh, we have created a package that extracts data from the single flat file source the data is then transferred uh, using the lookup uh, transformations and uh, finally the package uh, loads the data into the copy of the fact currency rate table which is new fact currency rate uh, which we have just checked here uh, the data is loaded into this table in the adventureworks uh, dw uh, 2022 sample database now what is an etl process so an etl process is basically extract transform load process uh, and this typically extracts data from multiple flat file sources as well instead of single file sources it can also fetch data from multiple uh, flat file sources and extracting data from multiple sources requires an iterative uh, now for example uh, if we talk about if we need a process that extracts uh, transforms and loads extracts the basically if we need a process that extracts the data from multiple flat file sources right and extracting this data from multiple sources require so extracting data from multiple sources if we talk about this typically requires data from multiple flat files maybe right and uh, extracting data from multiple sources uh, requires basically an iterative iterative sorry guys iterative control flow so if we need to extract data from multiple flat file sources then yeah uh, we need iterative control flow thing uh, basically a loop so this is what we will cover in this uh, tutorial so 
all right i think uh, we are good till this point now microsoft integration services can easily add iteration or uh, looping to the packages we can easily add iteration and uh, looping to the packages right so integration services uh, provides this functionality and uh, integration services basically provides two type of containers so if we talk about integration services um, it provide uh, two types of uh, containers for looping through the packages so what are these containers uh, the first one is uh, for each loop so first one is the uh, for each loop container and the second one is the for loop container which we can use for uh, looping or uh, iterations now let's talk about the for each uh, loop container it basically uses an enumerator for the looping uh, whereas if we talk about the for loop container which basically typically uses uh, the variables variable expression i would say so for loop containers uses the variables whereas the for each loop container uses the numerators uh, in this tutorial we will cover the for each loop container all right we will not cover the other one for loop container we will not cover but uh, we will cover the for each loop container and the for each loop container enables the package to repeat the control flow so if we talk about the for each uh, loop container it basically enables the package to repeat the repeat the control flow for each member of a specified enumerator so we will uh, show you practically how to use that enumerators and all now with the for each loop container we can enumerate so what all things can be enumerated so with the for each loop container we can enumerate what all things can be enumerated let's discuss about those items so first thing is we can enumerate the ADO record set rows we can enumerate the file and directory structures enumerates basically we mean iterates we can iterate through ADO record set rows we can uh, iterate iterate through uh, file and directory structures we can iterate through ADO.NET uh, schema information and there are multiple items I don't want to write uh, each and everything we can iterate through system package and uh, user variables and we can uh, iterate through innumerable objects in the variable we can iterate through items in the collection and we can iterate through nodes in an xml path language uh, or the uh, xpath expression and we can iterate through sql server management objects as well so i've uh, written few of a few of the items a uh, few of the items are just verbally spoken so you can make out the notes uh, so far i've mentioned some of the important items through which we can enumerate or iterate now uh, what we will do in this tutorial we will uh, modify the sisis package that we have created previously uh, 
to use a for each loop uh, container and uh, set a user defined package variable for the package we will create a user defined package variable and the variable is then used to iterate through the matching files in the uh, sample folder so let's see so in this uh, tutorial we will just modify the control flow and we will not uh, modify uh, do any modifications to the data flow right so guys uh, let's see how much we have recorded 30 minutes of video let's see if i can uh, cover some items here so this tutorial will also have certain steps uh, so we will go step by step so let me uh, point out the steps so steps for the package there will be four steps so step one will be to copy the package uh, created earlier this will be our first step and what will be the step two step two will be to add and uh, configure the for each uh, loop container and step three will be to modify the flat file uh, connection manager and step four will be no step four will be to test the package which will get built uh, up till uh, step three we will test the package again so again step one is to copy the package created earlier step two is to add and configure the for each loop container step three would be to we will modify the existing flat file connection manager then finally we will test the package now let me take them to next page so guys we will cover these steps in our uh, upcoming video which will be uh, part five of this video series so i think we are done for this video uh, please keep an eye if you are new to this channel or have not already subscribed to this channel please go ahead and immediately subscribe to the channel there's a subscribe button below this video click on that subscribe button you will get a bell icon uh, click on that bell icon select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future videos and let let's go back to the slides uh, so guys i thank you so much for your time uh, that you have spent on this video watching this video guys do post us your comments for any suggestions or any requests uh, you have uh, or if you would like us to make uh, videos on any particular topic uh, maybe if you, even if you would like to talk about your day-to-day -day life uh, pertaining to sql server what problems do you encounter and how do you tackle them uh, you may talk about uh, are my uh, videos uh, making any difference in your life in your day-to-day -day life or uh, are there in any situations where my videos have helped you if you guys uh, if you like this video please uh, go ahead and click on the like button below this video and also share your comments please do share this video with your friends if you have a good friend circle uh, please circulate my videos uh, to your friends if they are working in sql server domain if you feel that uh, my uh, videos can make impact in their life please do share with them as well and also please ask them to subscribe to my channel and if you have not already subscribed please go ahead and immediately subscribe uh, there's a subscribe button below that video below this video click on the subscribe button to subscribe i think we are done so we are done with integration integration services etl project tutorial part four soon we will be creating uh, part five so keep a watch keep subscribed thank you for your time have a nice day